Welcome to Council of Muses. I thought it would be fun for us to get started uh, even sooner than our event next Saturday with a little uh, getting ready exercise. As you can see here, I've got my mixed media notebook that I purchased for Council of Muses. Uh, this will be primarily for the monthly creative practices and I'm starting to feel inspired so they may be a little more frequent than monthly and I hope you enjoy them. The first thing we're going to do, though, is make this book our own. So uh, settle in, and I'd like to suggest we start by putting our intention onto the notebook, into the notebook, and opening to possibility. These two things, encoding them into the actual cover of the book. So. Uh, and, and this is actually related to the creative cycle as well. Um, on the one hand, uh, the idea of stating our intention is an example of convergent thinking. And on the other hand, asking what is possible is an example of divergent thinking. And it is this switch between convergent and divergent thinking that really informs the creative process. So we're going to start right here with the cover of the book. And what I've personally done is I have purchased a couple of squares of fabric from Walmart. Um, and I'm going to cover my book in fabric, but you could do collage. Um, I've got, you know, you could just cover it in images that speak to you from an assortment of magazines. Uh, you could find quotes and write them out uh, and collage those in as pieces of paper. And I'm going to try and demonstrate a little bit of all of that here in the, here in the little demo here. Um, this is actually an interesting sketch and I think I'm going to start by putting this in here. Um, and also please note that sometimes what, what I do here is not intended to be Mm, visible, per se, but rather it's about um, reprogramming my own brain and sort of cueing my brain in for the kind of work that I'm going to be doing when I'm in this notebook. Uh, the reason this image speaks to me is because it relates very much to the idea of uh, linking our words and actions not only to our head, but to our heart. And I think that's a lovely evocative image. So I'm going to set that aside and, and see if that fits in somewhere on this program. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is cover the notebook with this fabric. I'm, I think I'm going to use the black fabric on the outside so that I can decorate it. I think uh, that'll be um, a really dramatic background. And then, uh, so I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and glue the fabric on to the paper portion. And then I think on the inside, I'm gonna use this, uh, this sugar skull print, which I really adore. Um, I always find, I, I, I find that in, in my life, I wasn't really given a lot of connection to my ancestry and whatnot. And the older I get, the more I feel called to explore that and to draw on, if not the wisdom of my actual grandmothers going back, uh, but to call on them sort of in spirit. So I'll be back in a minute because I'm having trouble opening my jar of Mod Podge here. It's a bit stuck. So I'll be back when I've got this open. And success. Uh, thanks to my son and my sweetheart. It actually took both of them to get this thing open, but uh, it's open. And there's not a whole lot of mystery to this process. Um, and like I said, you can cover your notebook with whatever you like, but I'm going to put on a little music and see where this takes me. Because um, I always find it fun to have a little music in the background. I have 
few playlists on YouTube and uh, hmm, my computer is going to be really slow right now. Apparently, there we go. All right. Oh. Apparently, I forgot my water, so when you're working with glue or whatever, it's always also a good idea to have some water so that you can sort of clean your brush and also to store it in until such time as you are able to get around to cleaning it at the end of your session. All right, so we are back now with uh, paint water, or in this case, glue water. And of course, not paint water, that's my son. Um, I turn this music down a bit. And, um, well, join me as we, as I cover my book. Um, this is a good place to talk about brushes real briefly. Uh, I have got two sets of brushes. These are brushes that I use for painting, and these are brushes that I use for gluing, collaging, etc. Um, and uh, these are actually just some Chenille Craft Kids Craft brushes. These are awesome for applying glue, I have found, and um, they're really cheap, so I don't mind dedicating that, them to that purpose. Uh, also, just some little sash brushes. Uh, well, actually, this is some one I got from Michael's. Uh, this is just one I got from Home Depot. And um, yeah, you just buy a little painting brush like you would buy for painting your house. And those can be really effective as well if you want to get a little bit more of the glue down than you can with these smaller brushes. As you can see, I've got a pretty large area here to cover. So um, just gonna, now when you're doing this, you want to put on a thin layer. So you don't want it to be too thick. And you do that, you can do that with short strokes and go back over anywhere that seems to be too, um, too thick. And also I've got the brush pretty loaded up, but I'm just doing the tip of it here. I'm not putting the whole thing down. So um, I'm pushing down a little further as I need to get more glue to go on the surface. Now, I'm going to work pretty quickly, but I'm still only going to start by doing half of this. And um, I'll explain why in just a minute. Uh, because the glue does tend to dry pretty quickly, particularly if you're in an arid climate or whatever. You may not want to um, take the time to go all the way across. So I've just put that down. Now I'm going to fold this back to the point where the glue ended and I'll go ahead and finish the other side and um, yeah there we go Mod Podge uh, it doesn't work for everything but it works for a lot of things it's one of my favorite things for uh, particularly if I'm working on a thicker surface um, this because it's a pretty thick cover can actually take a slightly thicker application of the glue and I'm only going to go just to this little edge here um, you'll see there's a dotted line on the book. I'm just going to take the glue to that point, and um, you'll see that it's, it's soaking through a little bit. You can see somewhat the color of it. That's fine. Also, you'll see I've got a little bit of overlap here. Again, not a problem. We can uh, trim and fold and whatnot uh, when we are a little closer to being finished. Um, as you can see, this is actually pretty close to being the right size for this. Um, if you're fussier than I am, you could even iron it before you get started. Uh, or, like I said, you might choose to just cover it with images from a magazine. Uh, I'll probably do some of that afterward, but I kind of wanted to... I kind of like to start with a clean background. Um, other materials that you can use to cover your book. Uh, old pair of jeans. Denim is fabulous um, and will create a very sturdy cover for your book. Uh, old sheets or pillowcases, 
are okay, but they will tend to be a bit see-through, um, particularly on the front. If you're trying to cover up that um, cover up that printing, then uh, you know, then you may want to go with something a little heavier weight than say old old bed linens. Um, other other things, uh, if you've ever seen the canvas pads of pads of primed canvas so you can get canvas in you can certainly get canvas stretched on a frame but you can also buy canvas that is in a notebook format actually and that actually makes a wonderful cover particularly if you want to start with a white background I've used that many times and it's terrific uh, it's also fun for making envelopes or pockets if you're doing a smaller project so all right so that's that and get the outside covered. Now for the inside, obviously I'm going to have to cut this into a couple of pieces because it's a little bit too wide. So I'm going to fold it like this um, and let's see, grab some scissors here that are hopefully not too dull. There we go. And just go right up the middle. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on the inside, obviously. And um, as you can see, I've still got quite a bit of excess. I think maybe I'll trim this off before I before I go ahead with starting the inside. It might make it easier down the road. Not being too fussy here at this point about trimming it just to the right perfect size. Although probably edge it with something after. There we go. A little bit of extra. Put that in my scraps pile. And now we've got two pieces here. I'm going to fit this over here and here. All right. strongly encourage uh, that when you do this that if you don't have one make yourself a playlist and you know really go with what what makes you feel may anything that makes you feel honestly is great because a lot of what we're trying to do is get in touch with that side of ourselves which can be somewhat um, somewhat divorced and, and truly creativity is um, the product of not only imagination but but emotion um, so and yeah so i definitely recommend if you uh that you take some time to put together a playlist for yourself that you can play when you're doing your creative practice work uh, through the course of this year all right so there's one bit um i'm doing a little wrinkle in here see if i can pull it out be too fussed about it. Because the process and not the product that ultimately matters. Um, and that's one thing that's that I'm gonna encourage you to do too is to if you have a tendency to perfectionism, um, it's it's uh, it can be very inhibiting and uh, so when we're doing something like this where it's really just process oriented just let the process let the process be um, don't worry about being too perfect uh, I think we can always inter it's interesting because frequently I find some of the most interesting th things that happen come because oh well that didn't turn out quite the way I want and I better go back and change it and now that interestingly opens up all kinds of possibilities um, you see here I did put a little bit heavier coat of the glue on this side, on the outside, and it is curling up a bit. Um, not too worried about it, uh, but just something to be aware of that when you're working, that's um, the humidity of the glue, in fact, does affect the curl, even when you're working on a heavier cardboard, say, such as this. Um, so just to expect that, don't let it, you know, it'll be, this, this book is going to be getting a lot of use anyway, and it's going to take a shape of its own over the course of the year, I would suspect. Uh, 
maybe even one of the more interesting and nonconformist journals you've ever had in your life. Um, so again, starting on the inside edge, pulling it as I go, sort of, that's what I didn't do the last time. I, if you start at one edge, then you can kind of pull it and feel with your fingers and smooth out the wrinkles as you go. Um, not gonna kill myself over it, but try to avoid any gigantic ones. And there we go. Um, and maybe I'll even do this. Just fold this bit over here. That might be that might be fun. Might be a nice way to bring that color back to the outside. I'm not sure Think about that, but make our another trim cut here. All right. Feel the edge up here. Make sure that I'm clear of that. All right. And uh, so I'll give that a few minutes to dry. Okie dokie. So we're back. And now I want to actually, I, I noticed that these little cardboard squares that were inside my fabric are kind of nice. I think they might make a beautiful place to write my intention and to write my opening to possibility. So I'm just gonna grab a sharpie marker here and write down um, my intention and my opening to possibility. And I'm gonna collage those onto the book itself. So, all right, okay. So here's my intention. I intend to create a safe space for imagination, growth, collaboration, and celebration within a council of muses. And so that is going to go here, right here. And again, um, so now here I've got two options. Um, I've got this brush has already been in the water. So I'm gonna actually leave that one aside because I do have others that I can use. And I'm actually gonna get a fresh brush and um, just glue this directly down on top of the uh, tab over here. And uh, this time I'm gonna put it a little thicker because I gotta make sure that it adheres to that fabric and um, so since it's a more porous surface, you might need a little bit more glue to get that penetration into the fabric that's underneath it. Uh, so I'm gonna just put that here. And it feels like it wants to be a little bit off kilter. Um, okay, so there's my intention. And now on the back, I'm going to write an opening to possibility. I open myself, my heart, and mind to all possibilities.
intended or to something even better. Now, what this is doing is this is helping, starting to reset what we call, what I would call the creative operating system or the operating system of my mind. Um, actually, I'm going to grab a, I don't know if I have it here. I don't have it right here, but uh, Daniel Pink in his book Drive talks about how um, computers have operating systems. They are sets of commands that tell the computer how to run. And he talks about how societies also have operating systems. They are the rules and the shared uh, values and beliefs that people in a society have. And similarly, we as individuals have operating systems. We have our personal beliefs, we have our personal values, and we have ideas about what's possible, ideas about what is outside of the realm of possibility, etc., that guide us into certain uh, choices because we may not even sort of be aware of, of things that are outside the scope of, of what we know. And so by setting this intention, we are asking our brains to sort of setting our subconscious onto a pilot that says, hey, we are certainly going to, we want to get where we're going, but we want to be open to all the things that might help us get there and not just what we already know uh, or what we know we know. So uh, here we go. We're going to collage this in. You could just grab a piece of paper and write that in. It doesn't have to be cardboard. Nothing is particularly magical about any of these materials I'm using. It happens to be what is to hand and I find that that's such a delightful way to, um, to get going. So there we go. I open my heart and mind to all possibilities that support and lead toward that which I have intended or to something even better. And, you know, I think that this calls for a little washi tape. Um, I went through my little collection and I found some that I really liked. So I especially like this one. I think it goes so beautifully with the colors of that fabric. So if I can find where the tape begins... That, goodness gracious, what has, have I got here? Uh, does anybody have any washi tape openings? Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. And the other thing we can do is, um, once this has had a chance to settle in, we can, um, go over this and, ah, uh, yes, I think we want clean, we want this to be a little cleaner. And we can put a layer of um, a layer of Mod Podge over it as well to make sure that it will stay in place and it's not going to come peeling up. So we'll do that in a little bit. Better, something even better. Right? Mm. Not perfect. And that's okay. Right? Again, I open my heart and mind to all possibilities. And like I said, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add a little layer of Mod Podge over this to sort of help because washi tape is not the super stickiest thing in the world, right? So let's see if we can just seal that up a little bit. Give it a little extra glue, see if that helps. There we go. And um, so this is a good start. Now, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to let that dry before I can go to the other side. Because uh, if I were to close this book right now on it, this page would stick to that glue. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Ooh, but I actually thought of one other thing, um, a really fun thing to do while we are here with glue, that is wet, is uh, 
if I can find it, to add a little bit of glitter. Well, it took me a few minutes, but I found not only my glitter, but my stamps. And that might be something fun to work with as well in this case. I think this is just a collection of glitter that I've uh, randomly assembled. So um, out of sort of leftovers from other projects. So I'm going to see if any of this sticks. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe it took me a little too long. But let's just have some fun with it. As you can see, um, one thing you will notice about glitter is it does tend to stick better, show up better on a plain surface. This is a pretty, pretty um, already highly decorated background, but I kind of like the way that looks. So I might see if there's another way to make that work. Um, all right, so that and that's pretty feeling non-tacky at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and flip over to here and do my washi tape border on this side as well. Actually, that's a little easier that way, isn't it? So, yeah, I suggest doing two sides first and then top and bottom or whatever. Do opposite sides and then switch to the other sides. Uh, if you decide you want to create a border for something that you're putting in your book. Again, not being too super fussy. And again, I'm going to go ahead and lay down an extra coat of um, glue and a little bit of glitter because why the heck not? Right? Let's seal this up. Mod Podge is a lovely sealer as well. And I'm pretty good with those intentions. I like the idea that I am sort of locking them in for the year uh, by doing this, as a matter of fact. So let's just add a little more glitter. Not too much on this one, just a little highlight. This should stick pretty well this time because obviously the glue just got put down. Oh, I want to put it right over the whole thing. There we go. Just a touch of glitter. Very, very nice. All right. So, um, the last thing we're going to want to do is name our journal. Uh, you can certainly go with Council of Muses, but maybe sit and do a little journaling with your muse. Um, you might even go here while this is drying. Go to your first page and say, opening inquiry. Hmm. The story I have always told myself about me is a lovely one to start with. Um, we were talking a minute ago about operating systems, and part of the operating system we all have is the story we tell ourselves about our history, our personal history, where we came from, um, what we're good at, uh, and sort of the scripts they, that, that almost become scripts that we use to judge what's possible and, and what we're going to do in our lives. So take a few minutes and just write in your first page of your journal about this upcoming journey, uh, thinking about your intention, thinking about the possibilities, um, and maybe give, write, it, write an opening letter to your muse, I think. Dear Muse, dear Muse, I'm hoping to get to know you better this year. And I'll be right back and share with you what I wrote to my Muse and what she replied. Okay, so I have written my letter to my Muse 
Dear Muse, I am hoping to get to know you better this year. So excited to have you on my team as I embark on the Council of Muses journey. Beauty, adventure, and sensual delight. What advice do you have for me as we begin? I wonder. Tara Erin. And now taking another color, I am going to uh, do two things. I'm going to grab one of my magazines. I'm going to pull the first image that grabs my eye without any judgment. So I've got Martha Stewart living. Fall into fun. Anything here. You know what? This is one that I have plainly been through quite a bit. Let me dig a little deeper because I've seen that magazine too many times already. Let's get something fresh. Woohoo! Okay. Ooh. And you know what? Right here on the cover, it's not particularly a beautiful thing, but these words caught my eye, so I'm going to just cut them out. Good and easy. All right. Ooh, and look at how nice. I like that. It kind of really goes well with the colors in that thing. And let's see. We're going to take a flip through and see if there's anything else here that just an image that... Ooh. Yeah, let's go, let's go with this. All right. So... Taking these two images here, I've got the Golden Gate Bridge and the um, doesn't this have a wonderful sense of adventure to it? This image is going from here to there. I really love I really love bridges actually, so I'm not, not surprised. Um, so now I'm going to collage these in. Now, this time I'm going to go with um, another brush because I've got two wet ones over there. And uh, This is a very, very thin paper, so we're, I'm just going to put a really, really thin layer of... Actually, you know what? I might even just switch, in this case, over to the glue stick. Um, yeah, that's going to be a little better choice for this. Um, it's a quite a bit drier than the Mod Podge. And I'm just going to go right around the edge here and collage that on. And uh, I'm going to take this and roughly where it goes. Collage this on. Alright. What does my muse have to say to me? Well, she's given me these two images, and now I'm going to compose her reply. Uh -huh. Dear Tara Erin. I'll be right back. Dear Tara Erin, as you begin on this journey from here to there, keep your sense of wonder and joy. Yes, do use your common sense and planning, but don't lose your sense of play. Harder doesn't necessarily mean better. Let it be good and easy. Love your muse. Okay. I like that as a way to start this journey. Now, what does that tell me in terms of this journey? Ho oh, ho. Is that the name of this journey? Hmm. I think Council of Muses Work and Play. I think is my theme. So how I want to do that, I don't know. I'm going to start with, um, since I'm on a dark, set on a very dark background here, I'm going to actually sketch with a white charcoal. Um, if you're on a lighter background, you can use a Sharpie or a charcoal pencil or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to map this out and I think I'm going to counsel. Uh-oh. fun with this too. 
I get that. Uh, let's see. I get some stamps here. That we certainly are going on a journey. I like these. Yeah, little over the door. Some little travel. There we go. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be holding up too well, but we'll see. We'll see what we get. Looks like the uh, fabric is absorbing those pretty well, so not going to be as clear as I hoped. Um, yeah. But it's still there. And I know it's there, so I'm going to do one more. Celebrate the Council of Muses at Work and Play. I think that's a really important goal for our journey together. Um, we're going to be doing some hard work, and it'll be important to remember to celebrate while we go. All right, so now we're going to you know, take some... I think I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint and let it be, a little wash it over here and let it, uh, let's see, do I have a palette somewhere? No, let's see, I do. Hopefully you have a palette and some nice um, craft paints. I'm gonna pick a couple, I'm gonna pick two colors, uh, yellow and Ish. Ah, crimson. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this pink parfait. Right. Let's see what we get. And uh, so for this, I'm gonna take. I've got my two colors. And I'm going to actually take uh, one of my painting brushes and yes, I'm just going to lay down some color on here really uh, intuitively. And um, let those colors mix up a little bit too. I don't know. Fussy about this. All right, I think I'm actually gonna lay the book out like this now. I'm just, I'm just putting down a little bit of color, um, and I'm not being too fussy about it. Just wherever the color goes, that's where it goes. Um, I'm just gonna add in a little color in here, maybe. too fussy. Um, and maybe just for good measure, I'll get the Just put down some color. Um, this is where we let the muse begin to play and see what she begins to suggest. 
Um, I have a pencil of users and so I can play. I know that's my theme, my title. I like this. I like this color so far. And now I'm gonna, these um, edges are pretty dry now, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna not actually fold over. I'm just gonna trim these right, right close to the edge. And I'm gonna do a, there we go. You can do yours however you like. Um, this is just an example. Okay, so I've trimmed the edges of my draw deck, and now I'm just going to bind the edge off with some masking tape um, around the three edges of lipstick. So just lay it down halfway, fold it over, and um, yeah, so you'll have a, an edge that's not going to fray or come loose, and we can paint over that, um, tape over it with washi, or paint over it. Uh, I'll decide on that in a little bit, but tape the edges. Edges bound. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to do is just take a look and see what I might want to put on here. Uh, I'm going to, firstly, I'm going to paint my title on there, but even before I do that, I want to see what else I might want to do to finish up. So, I don't know. Grab another one. Here, I don't know, not seeing anything in this. Um, let's just go with a little bit more of our paint, paint on edges. These are some pretty cheap paints, about 50 cents a bottle. The Apple Barrel paints from Walmart. Um, and, uh, you know, they're kind of fun because I'm not that worried about wasting them in this case. Uh, eh, one of my edges is peeling up here. Eh, maybe we'll paint it for that. That'll help. Uh, maybe it won't help, but that's what we're going to try to do anyway. Um, okay. So let's take our colors and yeah, that might need a little bit of attention at some point. Take some sort of touching up afterward. Well, so be it. Ah, we're getting our colors a little mixed. I don't much care. with it, whatever you do. All right. And we'll repeat the same process on the back as soon as this has a chance to dry. Uh, but as you can see, I just painted over the edges. And so now I've got pretty close to finishing up here. Okay, so a quick note about if you decide you want to paint it on. Another really fun way to do could be to collage different letters onto the front of it. If you decide you want to hand paint it, Hand painting letters can be pretty tricky because it requires a fair amount of paint on the brush, but also a very, very light touch. So I've got a really, as you can, oops, sorry, let me see, let me make sure I got it here. I've got a fairly good blob of paint on the tip of this brush, but now I'm going to barely touch it and almost lift it away um, as I'm going around so that it's almost like trailing the paint above it. And as you can see, it's it'll tend to be messy. So you might want to experiment first on something other than your journal cover, because uh, it can be very frustrating trying to paint 
letters. Um, but if you want to, by all means do, just you need both a lot of paint and a very light hand. Also, try to do straight lines. Start from the top and go to the bottom, as I'm doing here. Um, for the U, I'm going to start at the top and go halfway. Then I'm going to bring it around from the other side and add the tail. So I'm always going from the top to the bottom. Um, I'm going to do the bottom half of this S, or from the left to the right. So see how I broke that S into three pieces. Again, from the left to the right, I'm going to go the top part of the E, the bottom part of the E, and then the middle, going from left to right and not trying to change direction as I paint. Going top of the S, the middle of the S, the bottom of the S. And that those tricks should help you to get a nicer letter, letter form. Um, Again, for the at symbol, I'm going to go from the top of the A to the bottom of the A, and on the front, and then on the back, and then I'm going to go from the top down to that tail, and then I'm going to go top here, down to this other side, and there you go, at, work, and play. Top of the W, and there you go. All right, well, this is what I've got, and I'll probably play with it some more. Um, I think the, the other thing that can be really fun is once you've got this, now you've created a space where the muse can start to come through and speak to you. So take some time and see, oops, see, there you go. I just didn't mean to make that so close there, but there it is. Work and play. Again, top to the bottom. Now I'm going to do some meditative little shapes on this. Just some dots. And as I'm making these dots, I'm listening and seeing if there's anything else the muse has for me. Um, to hear as we begin this work. And maybe it's not, maybe it's just this meditative practice. Um, follow the brush. Try to vary up the sizes. You can maybe start to create some patterns um, as you go and see what comes up. But again, there's no right or wrong to this. Just having some fun with the colors and You know, maybe, maybe your muse even starts to come through. Right now, mine has still got her eyes closed. And soon, our muses will be coming together. So, all right, well, that is the first video. Get your journal ready, and I'll see you on the call next week on our first quarterly retreat.